the objective of uh, the experiment is to simulate the transmitter and receiver for QPSK. QPSK stands for quadrature phase shift king and to plot the average probability of symbol error as a function of signal to noise ratio EB by N naught where EB is the transmitted energy per bit and N naught by two is the double sided power spectral density of additive white Gaussian noise with zero mean value. So in this experiment, the objective is to plot a symbol error rate of QPSK with respect to signal to noise ratio. Uh, so we will first start with the theory. So the uh, definition of uh, quadrature phase shift king is it is a form of a phase modulation technique in which two information bits are modulated at once. The advantage of uh, combining two bits in a, sim in, a, in a single symbol is that uh, uh, it can uh, decrease the data bit rate to half, which allows more space for the other users to transmit. That means basically it is decreasing the overall bandwidth requirement for the signal to be transmitted. So this is the one advantage of quadrature phase shift king in which the signal uh, you can say uh, or bits are two bits are combined in a in a single symbol. So uh, to transmit a QPSK signal, uh, there is a transmitter, and to receive or to detect a signal from our transmitted uh, symbols, we have a receiver at the receiving uh, receiving end. So in a transmitter, uh, you can in, in this transmitter there are certain blocks in in, in, a, in a first block there is a bit splitter which uh, splits the incoming uh, uh, data bits into odd bits and even bits and there is a serial to parallel converter which converts these serial uh, bits into parallel uh, parallel uh, combination there are two psk modulators there psk q and psk i uh, there are two components in a uh, uh, QPSK. There is a one uh, is in phase component is represented by PSKI, and uh, there is a quadrature component, uh, which is 90 degree phase shift uh, uh, apart from the in phase component. Uh, it is represented as PSKQ. So these are two PSK signals generated, and uh, a locally generated uh, carrier is uh, uh, multiplied by, by these. Uh, PSK modulators and there is a 90 degree phase shift uh, since the carrier of uh, PSK I and PSK Q are, uh, uh, are phase, phase shifted with uh, 90 degree. At uh, the output block, uh, these two signals are combined in order to generate a QPSK signal. So this is basically a transmitter of a QPSK modulation. Uh, in the receiver, at the receiver end, we have a QPSK input signal uh, fed to a PSKI and PSKQ product detectors. Uh, these are these signals are multiplied by again a local carrier generated. Uh, now, this uh, if uh, there is a synchronous uh, modulation, these uh, frequencies of uh, these uh, transmitted. Uh, carrier signal and receiver carrier signal must be same and then it fed to a bandpass or, or, a, or a filter both the uh, PSKI and PSKQ signals are fed to a filter and then there is a decision device and this decision device uh, converts these uh, uh, PSKI and PSKQ sig uh, sim uh, signals into uh, bits. There are even bits which is associated with the PSKI in phase component and there are uh, odd bits associated with the quadrature components. These bits are combined in order to uh, get the data which we have transmitted. So this is a block diagram of a receiver. This is a block diagram of a transmitter. So we want uh, to calculate a bit error rate of this QPSK signal. 
so in order to do that we will write a matlab script so let me explain this uh, matlab script so first of all what we will do what we will uh, define the variables uh, which we will use in our matlab script so uh, these clear all and close all uh, are the commands to uh, commands used in matlab to clear all the variables and to close all the figures uh, which are open now first uh, variable which we define is l we uh, this l is uh, the total number of uh, bits we are taking so uh, this is again we are uh, uh, in digital uh, modulation schemes the data is in the form of bits in the form of zeros and ones so we have a data stream of the length of uh, one leg that means 10 to the power 6 so in matlab uh, how can we define uh, 10 to the power 6 it is written as l is equal to 1 e6 so this is representing l is equal to 1 e6 is representing number of data bits this is 10 to the power 6 next is a signal to noise ratio remember the objective is uh, to plot the bit error rate with respect to signal to noise ratio eb by n naught so eb n naught db is the value of signal to noise ratio in uh, this in decibel so we are taking this value from 0 to 10 uh, in 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 the gap of 2 so the first value is 0 second value is 2 third value is 4 up to 10 so we have defined a uh, signal to noise ratio in decibel from 0 to 10. So next we convert this uh, value of signal to noise ratio without dB. So uh, this is the decibel value. We are converting this decibel value uh, without decibel value by using this formula in the MATLAB. So these are, are the overall uh, variables these are the only variables which we have defined in our matlab program so next is uh, signal transmission and detection how signal is transmitted how it is detected and how uh, can we determine the overall error in the detected signal so first uh, we define a loop uh, for that we have taken n is equal to 1 up to length of uh, the eb and not db now uh, if i'll go back to, again to eb and not db the length of uh, this uh, uh, you can say variable is, is 0 to 10 in the gap of 2 that means the length of this uh, uh, you can say variable is 5 so what we are doing in in this loop we are going from n is equal to 1 to 5 actually so what why we are taking this loop since uh, we want to plot the bit error rate with respect to uh, signal to noise ratio hence uh, uh, our uh, our bit error rate uh, should be of the same length of the signal to noise ratio otherwise matlab uh, will produce an error if the if the length of the two vectors is different they we, we, we cannot plot those vectors so in, a, in order to uh, keep the length of the vectors same we are taking this for loop uh, from one to up to length of uh, signal to noise ratio next is uh, uh, generation of in phase uh, symbol now there are two types of uh, components or you can say two type of symbols in uh, qpsk one is in phase component and other is quadrature component both are 90 degree phase shift apart so uh, again in in bpsk if, if i'll talk about bpsk the symbols are represented by one and minus one rather one and zero so uh, in normal uh, amplitude shift gain the symbols are represented by 0 and 1 stream of 0 and 1 but in bpsk and also in qpsk symbols are represented by 1 and minus 1 the lower voltage level is represented by minus 1 the higher voltage level is represented by plus 1 so in order to uh, generate a random sequence of uh, sim uh, of data bits uh, 
of one and minus one we use this command i will explain this command separately later on i will explain this command si is equal to or i i will explain this operation later on in detail how this operation works but uh, uh, this operation is used to generate a random sequence of one and minus one uh, and how much uh, how much uh, uh, columns are there in that sequence there are there will be l columns one row and l columns will be there in that sequence and it will be a random sequence between uh, uh, a random sequence of one and minus one similar to this we will also generate a quadrature component same as the in phase component and since uh, we are uh, here with, we are talking about a complex uh, qpsk signal we will add those two signals s i plus j s q this will represent a complex qpsk signal that will be transmitted to the receiver now since uh, we are talking uh, about uh, uh, noisy environment uh, there will be a channel there is a transmitter there is a channel and there will be a receiver so in that channel we are assuming that the channel is additive white gaussian noise there will be some noise gaussian noise uh, will be present in that channel that noise will be added to the signal and uh, it will uh, change the data bits some of the data bits of the transmitted signals and uh, what we, uh, the difference of the data bits which have changed and divided by the total number of bits will give us the bit error rate in order to get that bit error rate we define first the no random noise signal so now remember what is the difference between uh, these uh, signal generation we use this command rand and uh, to generate our noise signal we use this command rand n again rand n command uh, uh, let me explain this uh, command uh, what this command is doing here it will generate a random sequence uh, between uh, uh, 0 and 1 the length of the sequence is l that means it will generate a sequence of uh, sequence uh, random sequence between 0 and 1 uh, how much is how much symbols uh, symbols it will generate it will generate l symbols and now remember l is 10 to power 6 now this will this is multiplied by this uh, quantity now remember this eb and not is uh, signal to noise ratio what we are doing here is here is we are calculating the uh, power noise power by this operation and multiply by this random sequence will give us the total noise now in the next step we will add these two signals in order to get the receiver received signals now at the at the receiver what we are doing is since the channel is additive white gaussian noise we have added the signal s with the noise signal so r is the received signal so we have added both the uh, signal uh, s and w this is the or received signal so uh, this is uh, how we get a received signal now uh, now at the receiver how to get back our uh, in phase component so in order to get this in phase component we will use this command now there are in this uh, received signal there are two components s in s there are two components uh, in phase component and quadrature component uh, there is a real part and there is an imaginary part so si represents the real part so we are using this command real r it will give the real part in in signal r this is the signum function signum function i'll, I'll explain you uh, signum function signum signum function will give uh, three outputs either it will give one either it will give zero or either it will give minus one there are there are three possible outputs of a signum function this represents sign represents signum function it will uh, give three possible outputs either plus one either minus one or zero if the, uh, the signal r is greater than zero uh, or you can say the quantity in this function real part of r is greater than zero it will give plus one if this quantity less than zero it will give minus one if this quantity if this quantity is equal to exactly equal to zero it will give zero 
so this is uh, the signal function I'll, I'll i'll define this signal uh, signal function later on similarly we can get this quadrature component with the same command uh, the difference is there will be imaginary part uh, 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 rather than a real part since uh, in quadrature component uh, sq is it is representing a imaginary part after this what we will do we will first calculate the bit error rate in the in phase component what we will do we will compare this si with this uh, si bar as uh, si uh, underscore this si underscore is the receiver uh, signal si is si is, is is the transmitted signal so si is the transmitted signal and si bar is si underscore is the received signal we are comparing these two symbols symbols we are comparing these two symbols and we are taking some of these symbols how many how much sim, uh, how much uh, uh, data bits which are same and we are subtracting from the l and this whole quantity is divided by uh, l uh, that that means total number of data bits so this is our bit error rate for the in phase component similarly we'll get a uh, bit error rate for the quadrature component and uh, we will take the average of both these two in order to overall uh, bit error rate calculation so we are uh, taking the mean value of ber1 and ber2 to calculate the overall bit error rate so this is the complete calculation of bit error rate for qpsk now the last part of this program is to plot the uh, graph now, now before that i wanted to define this function signal function so if y is equal to signal x it will return uh, the value either one zero or minus one if it is not complex uh, if x is greater than zero x is equal to zero it will return zero if x is less than zero it will return minus one now remember it uh, cannot be a, this uh, real part of r cannot be equal to zero hence this si underscore will always return uh, one or and one and minus one that means it will uh, return a data sequence of uh, one and minus one now remember this si is also the data stream of one one and minus one now if the, is th this w is equals to zero in this in that case if this w is equals to zero in that case uh this si is always equals to si bar si underscore sorry uh, in that case the beta rate one will be equal to zero and if this si underscore uh, or i can say uh, this w is equal to zero this si underscore is also equals to zero in that case ber2 also equals to zero in that case total bit error rate will be equal to zero but this is not the case there will always be a, some noise in the channel and because of that there will always be a some uh, bit error rate associated with that so let me uh, go to the next part of the of the program uh, semi log y is, is the command used to plot signal to noise uh, rate, uh, signal to uh, sorry bit error rate with respect to signal to noise ratio why we are using semi log uh, y in, instead of plot command uh, this is a semi log graph why we are using semi log graph there are three types of graph uh, in, uh, in in a first type of graph graph the there is no logarithmic scale so in that case we use simple plot command in case there is uh, one axis is uh, logarithmic scale and uh, the other scale is normal scale in that case we use semi log graph if both the axes are log on a logarithmic scale then we use uh, log log graph in in, in this case since uh, our signal to noise ratio is in decibel which is the logarithmic scale hence we are taking a semi log y graph our uh, y value is normal value which is a bit error rate which we have uh, calculated in in the previous slide these are the levels x level and y level we are uh, keeping the grid on and when we execute this program we get this type of result so this is the bit error rate with respect to signal to noise ratio as the signal to noise ratio increases bit error rate decreases and uh, it, it is obviously because uh, signal to noise ratio if increasing that means signal power is increasing and uh, and noise power is decreasing if noise is decreasing we can say that uh, the error rate will decrease so this uh, graph represents the overall bit error rate or signal error rate of a qpsk signal so let me uh, go back to the matlab uh, window and execute this program 
So this is the MATLAB window. Uh, in this MATLAB window, this is uh, the current folder directory. Uh, this is the editor. This is the command window, and this is the workspace. So the uh, workspace contains the variables in the current uh, program. So in in uh, in our program, uh, uh, our simulation of uh, bit error rate or signal error rate for QPSK. These are the variables uh, which we have used in, the, in our program. So we will uh, write the program in the editor or the script uh, and then we will run the program. So let me just quickly uh, run this program. This is the same program which I have explained to you in uh, the slides. So let me just quickly run this program and uh, share the result screen with you all so i have uh, run this program and i am now sharing this result window so uh, this is the result of uh, this uh, program so this graph is showing bit error rate or signal error rate or the qpsk modulation scheme so in this plot, as we can clearly see that uh, as we increase the value of signal to noise ratio, the bit error rate is decreasing because as we increase the value of signal to noise ratio, the noise power is decreasing and there are less chances of uh, error in the output, uh, output data bits. Hence the overall uh, bit error rate decreases. So this is uh, the result of uh, this program now let me go back to the matlab window and show uh, one more result so uh, in this uh, uh, program we have used this uh, equation uh, to generate uh, the in phase uh, symbol and the quadrature symbol so let me quickly explain to you what this uh, equation is doing here so First, uh, let me uh, simply take a uh, rand function is actually do. so what I'm doing here, I'm uh, uh, taking a rand uh, function, rand command with uh, uh, 1 comma 10. That means it is generating 10 uh, uh, symbols, 10 symbols uh, uh, between 0 and 1 and uh, single row is there and 10 columns are there. So it is, it is generating uh, a random sequence of uh, well uh, of uh, 10 random sequence uh, between 0 and 1. Now, uh, if I'll subtract the value of 0.5 from the sequence, but what I'm getting is uh, some positive numbers and some negative numbers. So there are some negative numbers as well as some positive numbers. So uh, this subtraction of 0.5 from this number, uh, I'm getting some positive and negative numbers. Now, if, if I uh, round off this number, what I'm getting is, again, uh, this random sequence generating uh, some uh, other random sequence and this uh, next command is generating some other random sequence. So uh, do not uh, confuse between these two uh, commands because this, uh, uh, this is different command and this is uh, uh, different uh, command. So uh, this uh, round of uh, com command is uh, this round of command is doing here is it is uh, generating uh, uh, a random sequence uh, either minus 0.5 or plus 0.5. And if I'll multiply this uh, equation with uh, two, it will give me the value uh, equals to either plus one or minus one. So this uh, complete command will generate a sequence of one and minus one, which is essentially our QPSK symbols. So uh, that's it for, uh, for this uh, lecture.